The soda industry is huge and powerful, developing these products that are damaging to our health, to our children, marketing them to our children younger and younger. That's a sign of how things work, how systems are built, social systems in this country is on a racialized scale. So just from the go-get, you're gonna have to work twice as hard, three times as hard uh, to get results. This is our Black Health Matters Health Forum. What we're talking about today is the impact of race and place. How the color of the skin that you're in and oftentimes the place where you stay, how that affects our health. Anyone know about the sugar tax in Berkeley? Yes? All right, tell me what you know about the sugar tax, sir. It seems like a little bit, but that has generated millions of dollars within the city of Berkeley. And that helps to fund the work that we do with Thirsty for Change. As we go out and we get people, particularly people of color, to limit their sugar consumption. Sharing a PowerPoint presentation with someone about the importance of nutrition and health eating is one thing. Actually identifying the produce to purchase, giving the gift card to purchase the produce, and then demonstrate how to cook it, that's a whole other level of engagement that leads to connectivity, that leads to improvement in outcomes and behavior change over time. And so we're fortunate to partner with City of Berkeley through a lot of our funding with the uh, soda tax funds that passed in 2014 to support our Thirsty for Change work. We also have a lot of support from City of Berkeley around our STEP programming to support our moms. Whether it's our Sisters Together Empowering Peers program, our Thirsty for Change Healthy Eating and Nutrition program, or our Telling Our Stories Healing Centered Writing Circles, all of them are rooted around self-empowerment, advocacy for oneself and community, as well as self-determination. Thank you so much for participating. Late 2018, the city of Berkeley released a health status report. And the risk of an African-American woman having premature babies twice as high as any other mom. Also, African-Americans are twice as likely to die of heart disease than any other population. The beverage industry comes after us, they target our youth. Uh-uh, that ain't right. The number of black people living in Berkeley is going down, down, down. Believe it or not, it used to be 40%. Now, it's down to 7%. And those 7% has a lot more illness than others might. So the consciousness around it gets lost if you don't have people constantly jabbing, jabbing, jabbing for change. Measure D, what sparked it all, the schools lost their funding for their gardens from the federal government. The parents were really panicked. The parents are the ones that started to really get out. And these are, mind you, mostly white parents. You need to be mindful and give credit to those parents who saw the need to kind of organize I'll buy it, just relate it to their funding for their garden program, we all benefited by it. And when I saw it, I was very encouraged by the number of people, the breadth of expertise, and I was also dismayed by the lack of people of color and voiced that immediately and indicated that unless we change that, we were not gonna be successful. When you start to discuss things with, with communities of color, you have to use the language of communities of color. And I'm not talking about English, Spanish. I'm talking about the motions of language and, and just the whole thing of how you converse or work with people. And unless you have people in the forefront who reflect that, the community does not think you're true to your word. It's very, very important to have people who look like the people most affected as a part of the leadership and who really kind of get out there. We had a lot of input to writing the ordinance itself, you know, establishing what distribution the funding should go to, all that was from us. 
black presence, Latino presence on these various commissions and stuff that determine where the money goes. You see, it's a pretty deep issue. That's really important that the community have that kind of an input. And just give it to us 100, okay? This is the space for that. So we, we find time and time again, our moms are coming and seeing that this is a place of respite. This is a place where you can come, let your hair down, and really discuss really hard challenges about navigating living and parenting and all types of aspects of, of living as a black woman in America. And so it's a place to feel safe, to be uh, expressive of yourself, and to understand that there's a community wrapped around support. To give us strength. We only have three years of data, but we have more than 1,500 women that have gone through it. And the women then bring their partners or their fathers and their children to our activities. And in Berkeley right now, there's only about 8,000 black folks all together. So we are reaching probably 90% of the families, black families in Berkeley. That is really something. Learn the stories and learn how to assist women to be empowered. We know that the community gathering, the sharing stories, the doing life together, it's all public health happening outside of the public health department per se. We have statistics showing that we're being successful in terms of the people that are stopping buying of sodas and say they're not drinking sodas, as well as people who are drinking more water and buying more water. And it's not over, and it won't be over until we keep getting that money and the money goes in the right places and doesn't get diverted by the city and people are reminded of the health issues around diabetes and all that that are affected by sodas and sugar-sweetened beverages. We just have to keep up the vigilance.